I'm Mike Burkhart. Uh, I work for IBM. I'm the product manager for NVMe over TCP and VMware integrations. On to the topic, um, NVMe over TCP and the NVMe OF gateway for Ceph. Um, so how, how many people use NVMe drives today? Yep, cool. Uh, how many use iSCSI? <laughs> so NVMe is, again, the, the drives are highly durable, parallel, um, very scalable. Um, NVMe over Fabric is a spec that 2018-2019 uh, nascent then well-developed, well-mature now, provides exposure to NVMe disks over different fabrics, so uh, Fiber Channel, RDMA, and now NVMe over TCP. That's what we're going to focus on today. So, um, again, the purpose is to, you know, NVMe drive the capacity and scalability and durability there. The transport is going to enable scalability, and that's what Ceph is good at, right? We'll take advantage of that durability and parallelism, but we're also going to take advantage of the scale over the network so we can grow that cluster or those clusters to, to immense proportions. Association model, that's, that's very technical. Um, what, what we mean here, so on the TCP connections, per instance, our, our uh, TCP driver is user space, and per connection, we're going to have uh, a session, per se. So every connection to an NVMe namespace is going to be its own unique associated controller. Okay, so it's one to one, those are ephemeral. So that also allows for a great amount of scale and control. Um, it's not hard bound to any hardware or software. There's no you know, reassembly constraints, et cetera. This is, again, built to be scalable, rapidly usable. Um, so so iSCSI uh, is, again, I come from the land of iSCSI and it was, difficult back then, you know, 15, 20 years ago, seeing when it was initially adopted. Great return on investment, great amount of efficiency and cost, but it was kind of a bear to troubleshoot. You may have to network gap it. You may, there's a lot of stuff that you had to deal with. And then, it just again, it, it didn't perform as you wanted it to do on a one gig network, right? 10 gig, that helped it along, but again, that, is, that has happened to me more than a couple times, so I apologize. This. <laughs> so um, anyway, so we have, again, iSCSI is a bit legacy. Uh, we can enhance the performance, higher throughput, better IOPS, reduced latency. I mean, all great enhancements just through network transport. Same concept, different implementation, right? Why NVMe over Fabric? So I already talked about a little bit about the idea that you can have NVMe drives, which are high performant, parallel, durable, scale across the network. Um, you're also looking at the fact that we have RBD underscoring the implementation of NVMe over Fabric, okay? So RBD is already rock solid, used, tested, performant. We have mapped almost all of the direct functions for NVMe over TCP to RBD native calls, and we're gonna see that in the later slides. Distributed end-to-end, so there's no rigidity in the structure, and reliable object access to sharded repeated erasure coding. You know, there's, again, so much more than this. Industry standard, right? We've got Samsung, Intel, a bunch of other major players developing on the development kits for this. Um, also, to take advantage of an NVMe offloading and DPUs. Anybody use DPUs today? Any smart NICs? Yeah? Okay, cool. So let's, let's dig into the details of the gateway itself. Pretty standard, does this look familiar? This architecture probably looks familiar to anybody, right? It's kind of many-to-many connection, right? Got the gateway in the middle. Um, Rados protocol is gonna communicate with your NVMe over fabric gateway. And like I said before, that's gonna be a user space driver developed upon SPDK, connecting out to your NVMe over fabric initiators. Okay, so an, an client, uh, uh, initiator target type of approach. Pretty standard. This is going into what I was talking about before where we have existing RBD structure. So we know about Ceph nodes and clustering. We know about OSDs and then RBD images are underscoring your NVMe namespaces, okay? Um, but if anyone's familiar with the term BDEV, that is the, the technical term that we map BDEVs to RBD images. And then the basis of the communication from your client to initiate, or your initiator to your target, is going to be subsystems. So your subsystem, effectively think about it as a cordoning off of namespaces. So I'm corralling the goats. All my namespaces need to be in a subsystem. That's how they're gonna be 
quarantined, so to speak. So we can have multiple subsystems, multiple gateways, et cetera. So that does scale. Um, so with respect to controllers, again, remember controllers are ephemeral per session. Um, once the client disconnects, that controller can go away and those contacts can be reused. So you're not looking at like increasing semaphores or contacts or trying to like, you know, custom tune this nonsense, it's gonna be recycling itself. It's not like Java garbage collection. Control plane, um, you've got the ability to communicate over GPR, or gRPC to the control daemon, and the data path, we already saw this in previous slides, that's just the initiator to controller subsystem on top of RBD to OSD. So um, that communicates over MTLS. And if I'm going a little bit fast, I'm trying to stay on time because I'm a talker. Configuration over that, so the, the configuration of the gateway itself is going to be stored in the OMAP. Um, the config can be migrated between, uh, instant, we're working on uh, replicating the config itself, but that is stored in a different portion. It's not, with, it's not within the data path. Uh, so I mentioned SPDK before. This is a storage performance development kit. Um, it is a collaboration between a lot of very good developers and a lot of great companies that have come together to provide tools and libraries for NVMe over fabrics. So, um, and like I said before, they, there is a possibility of fiber channel, RDMA. Our focus is on TCP. Um, <clears throat> and again, this is a user space driver, so you don't need kernel modules loaded or any custom downloads. This is all self-contained, so when you deploy the NVMe gateway, you're deploying the full stack on top of a Ceph cluster. So this, I spoke about this previously, NVMe to RBD command mapping. Almost all of the native NVMe commands have been mapped back to RBD. So the reason for this has been efficiency, simplicity, and performance. Um, if all of these commands can be mapped to RBD native, the performance should be as close to RBD as we can get. It's not gonna be exact. Right, but we do have a great improvement over iSCSI. Um, I should stop saying that. Uh, <laughs> but we did have to emulate a couple of commands and that's gonna be by design by nature, right? So not everything can be a one-to-one. -one. Um, we do have multi-pathing available. So you're gonna have an, an active passive, so ANA optimized, uh, asynchronous namespace. Uh, is anybody gonna give me the last A? Async does anybody know? Asynchronous namespace. Access, I believe. Um, so first one's gonna be optimized in controller A, so that's your active namespace, and then during any sort of failover, you're gonna have the inaccessible one take over that path. Um, also load balancing and scaling, so same, same model applies, right? You've got your active and passive paths, but you can build out multiple gateways. Uh, also, each gateway is going to load all subsystems available. So uh, you can cordon these off by NQNs. You can segregate those environments. So if you have multiple namespaces and multiple subsystems underlying, you can kind of mix and match and have that um, kind of that quarantining if you desire. Uh, and then discovery, we do have discovery controllers. Uh, so effectively, when you want to connect an initiator to the environment, just IP and port and then it should discover the underlying namespaces. And again, if you've got NQN masking enabled, which by default, no NQNs can connect, that's just not on the list. So you have to either add star for all or specific NQNs for those subsystems. And then QoS, um, IO per second, this is all uh, QoS per volume. So uh, global QoS across gateways, so this is a, another thing. So across gateways not planned, um, this would be for many different reasons, right? We have multiple gateways, multiple use cases, and multiple workloads across those, so we're only gonna keep QoS within a specific gateway or gateway group um, and not across them. So with respect to integration, we do have natively uh, integrate with VMware a VAI APIs. So this is for storage acceleration and offload. So how many people, does anyone use VMware in the environment or anyone have VMware environments? I don't, no one wants to raise their hand, I get it. Uh, I, got, I got a couple of hands, all right, thank you for being honest. Um, I, I'll try to protect you in the parking lot. Um, <laughs> so with respect to the, the API integration, these are all native commands that actually accelerate storage offload. So it makes it really efficient to create a new volume, delete, zero things out, et cetera. It, it offloads all of that onto Ceph uh, APIs instead of trying to perform that natively on the, the client side. Um, so auth, 
uh, TLS PSK currently, so we do have an encrypted channel. Um, In-band auth is planned for the future. Um, for those of you that have looked into SPDK, um, there's some, there are a couple of specs out there, so they're still trying to finalize those, so that's why it's in the future. We did a test against iSCSI, our previous performance, um, and just to see, again, you need to know where you came from, where you're going, so we had to have good test against our previous numbers. The configuration uh, was eight servers, um, Intel Xeons, 2.2 gig, 56 cores, 100 gigabit, um, four disks, two SDs, two OSDs per NVMe disk. So um, you're gonna see some, some interesting results. And by interesting, I mean pretty good. iSCSI is in blue. That, uh, that doesn't scale too well. Um, you're gonna see the different reactors. So a reactor is a thread, it's a single process. So you can adjust the amount of reactors per gateway. Um, that can be modified. There's a, a hexadecimal value you can load. So um, here during the scale testing and performance, we went up to eight reactors. So initially, um, almost, I think it's almost 300% better, almost 500% better than iSCSI initially. Um, the last one, because of N plus one, I think we had like a double read hit, so I believe we had uh, a single node reading from two OSDs at the same time, so that's probably why you saw the drop. But every, every other test, again, you're gonna see here on right comparisons, scale up, right? So more nodes, more reactors, more workloads, more performance. And then random read, read write 80, 20. More, more of a real world, realistic, you know, not a burnout test, but something you're gonna see in your own data centers. So um, again, highly performant, scales well, um, very efficient, very, very workable. Um, so that is what we have for the presentation.